Now I want to demonstrate how to build a simple road network using the Scenario Editor. By clicking on the button New Road Definition, the existing road will be cleared. I start off with the straight road segment and the first click will be the origin of the whole road network with the x and y coordinates equal to zero. The second click will define the end node of my straight segment that can be placed anywhere on the map. The key F9 on the keyboard can be pressed once to activate um, a reduced angle and position resolution. This facilitates the creation of more even road networks. So after defining the end node of the first segment, it's possible to edit the length of the straight segment via this parameter's input field. Now I'm going to add a turn segment. Therefore, I have to do a long click on the road segment function and select turn. As a general rule, we can note that there is more than one function behind each element with a black triangle at the bottom right corner. The turn element um, will be attached to the end node of the straight segment. So I click on the end node of the straight segment and the second node I place anywhere because I can change the radius and the angle of the turn segment afterwards. So 100 meters for the radius and 30 degrees for the angle. So at the end of this turn segment I want to add another straight segment. So again long click on the road segments function straight I click on the end node of the turn segment and I can adjust the length again with this function here I can center to the view of my road network at the end of this segment I want to create a junction with three junction arms there are three different junction models available in CarMaker. Each one is more suitable for different use cases. I can access the junction tools also under the road segment tool. And I can see there are three different junctions. Um, a normal junction, direct junction and a virtual junction. I want to use a normal junction in this case. For a normal junction, the junction arms must be created first before they can be connected by the junction element. Hence, I will proceed by adding the other links first. At the left arm, I'm going to add another straight segment with a length of 500 meters. So the list of available elements can also be accessed via a right click. So on the road segment, I can find all, all available elements. I'm going to choose a straight segment five hundred meters is length and I can also um, change the position of my segment when the road segment tool is still activated so I can grab this segment and can move it by by mouse interaction. At the right arm of the junction I'm going to add a point list. So for point list I need to define a start starting node and a start direction as I can see. And now I can freely place the points of the point list. The curvature will be adapted and interpolated automatically. So again, a double click is needed to complete the point list definition plus the end direction vector. The position 
of the existing fixed points can be adapted afterwards as, as we can see and I can also place new fixed points after initially defining the point list. So as all junction arms are complete I can now go on to add the junction To do this, I just need to click on the end or start nodes of the links and at the last node I need to do a double click again. The definition, the blue handles allow for easy adjustment of the junction area as you can see. Like this. Now it's a good time to save the road file. With this tool here, save road file as. And I'm going to name it my road. And this will save the road into the project directory. The virtual junction model is rather used for defining a special type of connection between links, in which an additional link can be connected with the main link without altering or interrupting the main link's geometry. Virtual Junction element enables the user to model road branches from the main link, for example to model farm road entries or exits. Well, let's say I want to add an exit to a farm road along this link. First I'm going to add a straight And afterwards I can add a virtual junction element. In order to do so I need to choose it. And then I have to click on the start node and place two points along the main link. And the definition again with a double click. You can see the virtual junction has been added. And the main geometry hasn't changed. I can still and change the position of my farm road. So, quickly save the changes. Next I want to demonstrate how to add a parking area along the road. First I need to define a lane section at which the parking area will be located. There is a separate function to add lane sections under the road tab. I select the lane section tool choose the link on which I want to add the lane section and click at the position where the lane section should be placed. For precise positioning I can use the parameters input field. I place a second lane section at 60 meters distance from the first lane section so my parking area will have a length of 60 meters in total. After defining the lane sections for our parking area, I can simply add an additional lane using the lane function. Just click once on the lane section. And this will highlight the selected lane. And when I move the mouse towards the reference line, the orange highlighted area indicates that another lane can be added by doing a click in this area. By clicking multiple times, multiple lanes will be added. Um, I can delete a lane or other objects by selecting it and pressing the red cross in the par parameters widget. In order for this lane to look like a common parking area, the shape of the lane can be improved by specifying a point list for the lane width. So by clicking once on the lane, I can see that I can specify a point list for the lane width. For a parking area, the following parameters seem pretty good, as we can see. A very helpful feature in the scenario editor is the tree view of the scenario object to identify each object. It can be found by clicking object list on the right hand side 
there's an entry field for the object ID and a filter function that um, simplifies the search of objects. The parameters of each object can simply be reached either by a double click on the object or via the parameters tab. For example, when I want to reach the parameters for L1. In order for the Ego vehicle to drive on the road, a trajectory has to be defined by specifying a route. The route function can be found on the traffic tab. As soon as the route function is activated, the predefined paths are visualized on the road in green color. Since I just want to move along these predefined paths, I simply start the definition of the route by clicking twice on the first path and I continue the definition by selecting the consecutive paths. At the junction, obviously there are more than one paths selectable. I want to turn to the right junction arm, select the paths here and confirm the root definition by a double click. I can give the root a name. I call it my route. Additional routes can be defined by right clicking and selecting start new route. I just select the first path and the consecutive path again to the junction and I want this new route to lead to the left junction arm. I again confirm the route definition by a double click and I give this one the name construction site. As we have seen already, the 3D preview in IPG Movie can be started by this button here. The yellow preview ball moves along the route. Our active route is the first route we defined called my route. If I want to change the active route, I need to go to the scenario settings and the gear wheel button and select construction site as the active route. When I reload the IPG movie preview, I see that the preview ball leads to the left junction arm up to the end.